Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to my series I'm doing on building my new log trailer. If this is your first time here, I'll leave you a link up in the cards and down in the description to a playlist that contains all the videos that bring you up to where we are right now. Last time we got this thing painted and we got all the wiring prep done. So all the wiring is run in the frame and it's ready for all the lights when we get this thing back down onto the ground, which is what we're gonna be working towards today, getting this thing back down and off the stands. So maybe I'll give it a spin, you know, for the last time. Or for possibly the last time. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just got the axles prepped to go back on. So when I put this together, I was figuring I was gonna be taking these apart again if I was taking this trailer to like a place to get painted. I figured I'd be stripping the trailer down in a parking lot and taking the whole axle assembly apart again. Uh, it didn't end up happening, but I just went through and pulled everything apart and got some anti seats and everything. Went a little crazy, as you can see with that. But uh, that's all ready to go back on, and then I'll put anti seize on as I'm putting the suspension components back together onto the frame. So I'm gonna get these axles positioned underneath the trailer again, and then start uh, bringing it back down to the ground. Can't wait to roll this thing around again. This would be easier to get out of the way. It's been blocking the driveway for the last like week. Now here's something I totally forgot about, which would have been a little bit easier before the axles were attached. Getting the passenger side brakes wired up to the wire that goes through the axle and will connect it to the rest of the wiring. You know, would have been a little bit easier, but luckily it's not too difficult either with the axles attached. <laughs> a little bit of solder, a little bit of heat shrink, and this side is all set for brakes, sort of. It's not hooked up to the other side yet, but I want to touch the side again. All right, so next is going to be to wire the brakes. It's going to happen all on that side, which is going to be kind of interesting because uh, I'm going to be under there and uh, there's not a whole lot of headspace or room for cameras. So hopefully you can show what's going on, but it's, you know, more uh, ring terminals and some soldering. Not that exciting. So I thought maybe it might be easier to show a before and after what's going on down here rather than trying to get a camera in here while I'm working. So this is the, I guess the after and this is before. So what I'm doing is creating essentially a little wiring harness here, which then brings the wires or the leads from the transverse line that goes through the axle as well as the brake, which is right here. So you can see on this side, I have this line here, which goes through the axle that goes over to the passenger side brake and this is the line coming out of the brake, which is right here. So both of those will come back into the junction box and tie in there. Now normally, or I guess on other installations, we don't have a nice junction box here. You have a whole bunch of splices and things out here in the open, which I'm trying to avoid. So this little wiring harness just makes it uh, pretty nice, <laughs> I guess. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. These all, all four of those have to be extended just like I did over here and I'll make it nice and clean looking with some jacket and I'll you know, I'll figure out some kind of clamp or a clip or whatever to get these stuck up all nice in here. But uh, install's looking pretty clean, that's for sure. Oof. And this is where I'm gonna leave things for now. Got this side all hooked up and all into that one junction box. I have a, uh, a hole drilled over here already. That's tapped for all these clip things, but I don't have any big enough right now, so I'll put that in later. I'm gonna leave this box open so I can test everything, make sure it works first. So I'll put the tires on and move on from here. So with this trailer back down on the ground, next I'm going to start working on the installation of the lights. And I think I'm going to start with the easiest ones, which are going to be these front light boxes. So these lights have a little uh, pigtail thing here with a plug on it. So if you damage the light, all you have to do is just plug a new one in. You don't have to do any wiring, which is super nice. 
So this is just going to be extended onto the leads that are on here right now, and that one will be all set to go. So that's going to be the easiest one, which is going to be, you know, a nice warm-up. Just a little bit of solder and some heat shrink, and uh, that's really about it for the wiring. All these mounting holes have a bunch of paint in them now, so before attaching this box on here, I'm just going to run a drill in here with the tap just to clean out the uh, little bit of paint. Now I have some sealant on the back of here. I'll just feed this wire into this and then just bolt this bad guy on here. Put this grommet in here. Okay, this is our amber light because it's yellow. Just plug this guy in here. It should be all set to go. Maybe. <laughs> A flex. One down. So this side again is not too crazy. I have the feed coming in from the front of the trailer. This is going to go back up to the front markers and then I have the side marker here which is going to go into the side of the box. So not a whole lot of connections in this one but the other side will be again a little more exciting or full or whatever. So uh, you know it's the same thing again. We're going to do some more uh, well, no soldering this time. We'll do some heat shrink ring terminals and uh, make it look nice. Screw everything down, and this side should be good to go, I guess. It's a lot of the same thing. <laughs> Just rinse and repeat constantly. So I have the wiring harnesses prepped for the side marker as well as the rear marker turn signal thing. And I'm trying to figure out which, uh, which lead on here is the basically the same as the marker and which one is a turn signal. On here, it tells me that this one down here is supposed to be the turn signal, which should be the bottom prong here, but I have no idea which wire that actually is, so we can use a continuity tester to try and figure out which one that is real quick, and then we can get these wire harnesses into the terminal block. I want this one, Let's see if it's, what do you think, black or red? Red. Red is turn signal. So now I gotta see uh, which color on my wire right now is the right turn signal since we're on the right side of the trailer. And then we get these things in the terminal blocks. The green wire in here is going to be my turn signal. I'll do that one first since it's the easiest. The other ones are pretty easy. Both of these blacks are going to my marker light terminal, which is going to be the brown connection here. And then I have two grounds, which are going to be going to my red. And the only other wiring here is going to be that yellow one, which would be the, uh, the left turn, which will be on the other side. Now I can pop in the lights and this side is done. So this side is going to be pretty much exactly the same as the other side. The only real big exciting difference over here is we have these additional two lights inside the box which will illuminate the license plate. Other than that though, everything else is pretty much the same. I guess the only big difference is the turn signal wire is going to be, of course, left turn signal on this side versus right on the other side. This wiring job is just a lot of this, putting connectors on the ends of things. So I just got this front area all prepped and it's not a whole lot different than the back, so I don't really film most of it. But uh, you can see inside of here I have another terminal block, a little tiny baby one. I kind of wish I got like a double row because it's a little tight in there. I was thinking a single row would be easier to install, but 
a double row will be a little bit easier with getting four different leads in here. I have a jumper here from this ground, or which should become the ground. This is into the frame of the trailer, which is into this lead here. That's the ground for all the wires now. And then, you know, the other ones just simply connect to that. So this little connection point ties into the back of the trailer for its main signal, comes up to here, and then one lead comes back into this light box, and then there's the two leads here for those front uh, two marker lights. I managed to miscount and only order, or order too few amber lights, so I will be waiting for a few more of those to come in. Let's head back here and take care of the rear lights, which are gonna be far less elegant and a little more traditional. So these are gonna end up being kind of daisy chained together. It's the only thing that's really gonna be wired in series. I'm trying to stay with keeping things parallel as possible. So they will be grounded directly to the frame underneath, and then the actual line for the power for the lights will kind of just daisy chain together so we get all three of them connected. So I've extended these two over here so that I can bring them all onto this side here. And I can have ring terminals on the ends of all of them. And that'll allow me to just put them all together with a bolt. And I'll put some shrink wrap on top of that, or not shrink wrap, heat shrink on top of that. And that'll be the connection back in here. Now with the interest of getting them out of the way, I'm gonna throw the fenders on next. And my original idea for these was to have some sealant behind them, just like I did for the light boxes. But looking at things now, I mean, you can fit a pallet fork between there. So I'm thinking maybe having the fenders be actually easily removable without like destructively removing a seal every time you wanna take the fenders off might be a good thing. I don't really know. I'm gonna explore that a little bit. So here's my little, I guess, promise. I'm gonna leave it like that for a year. If I never take them off to load the trailer like this with pallet forks, then I will just permanently attach them because I probably won't ever use them. But at least now, it seems like it could be a worthwhile thing to have as an option. So I'm just gonna bolt them on directly and um, I think that's gonna be fine for the time being. All right, that's starting to look like an actual trailer, which is super exciting. So next I'm gonna knock out the breakaway switch, this guy right here. So we have this line here, which comes from the breakaway battery box right there. And then we'll have one line here, which will go back to the uh, brake terminal here in the junction box. So connect these two together, extend this one and get it into the box. And I guess mount this thing. I'm thinking I'll just put it right, right there. It seems like it's out of the way enough as opposed to putting it down the side or something like that. So a couple of solder and heat shrink connections and then drill and tap a hole for a bolt. So next I'm gonna take care of the safety chains which will connect the trailer to the truck in case the uh, coupler fails at any point. So the, uh, the general idea with these things is that you want to use a chain that has an ultimate strength higher than the total loaded capacity or total loaded weight of the trailer. So in my case, this trailer fully loaded will be grossing at 12,000 pounds. Um, so you want a chain that has an ultimate strength higher than that. So a 5 16th grade 70 chain has got an ultimate brake strength of 16,000 pounds. Uh, I went ahead and bought some 3 8 which takes it up to 25,000 pounds. It's a nominal difference in price. So I figured, you know, why the heck not just go with a bigger chain just to have it there. Then you have two of them as a redundancy kind of thing. So you want at least one strand to be able to support the fully loaded weight of your trailer you're doing. So I bought just a off the shelf pre-made binder chain. So it has the grab hooks on the ends already, which we'll not be using. I'll be switching them off to these uh, larger uh, slip hooks but it's just actually cheaper to buy a pre-made chain like this than it is to buy, just buy the foot based on what you need. So this is a 20 foot chain. I'm gonna cut off the sections I actually need and make my chain, my safety chains out of that. And then I'll have a little bit of chain left over that I can use for other stuff. As far as the length goes, 
Uh, the chains on my current trailer are 27 inches long. I'll probably go with something that's about the same length. The, uh, the amount of slack in those ones is just fine. There's actually a decent amount of slack there. If you make them too long, you can always shorten them up by twisting the chain before you connect to your truck. So I would guess, you know, air on the side of too long versus too short. So there we go. Safety chains are all installed and I get to add a uh, roughly 14 foot chain to my arsenal of uh, chains. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on from here, I guess. And now we're getting down to the last little things. So next up is gonna be the reflective tape, which I'll put onto the tongue as well as along the back. So I just installed these marker lights here. The replacements that I had ordered, or the extras that I ordered, are gonna take a little while to come in. So in order to keep this thing moving, I picked these guys up at the local auto parts store. They don't match, because uh, the ones I got before are clear lenses, but it's not a huge deal because the wiring harness that these things attach to is exactly the same as the other ones. So when the matching ones come in, all I have to do is pull these lights out and unplug them, plug the new ones in, put them back in, and they'll all match perfectly. And uh, yeah, so that's good enough for now. Let's do a wiring test so I can make sure everything works and I can actually get the covers onto the junction boxes. Test those brakes out. Okay, hang on. Okay, left turn, what? left turn. That's a right turn. I know, check it. Okay, right turn. Right yeah, now right turn, please. Good. Put the headlights on. It's on. That's on. That's on. That one's on. Those ones are on. This one's on. And that one's on. Okay, time for the brakes. Okay. Okay, brakes work. Okay. Yeah. That didn't work. Okay, so let's check that. Okay, after a small amount of uh, diagnostics, found out I'm an idiot. There we go. Breakaway works again. <laughs> oh, again, I guess finally worked. Very nice. So just a small wiring mix up on my part. Uh, the blue coming out of the breakaway uh, battery goes to the switch, not the black. This goes to uh, charge the battery. So I'll just uh, fix this up a little bit and then that should be it. I'm actually kind of surprised though that this was the only problem. With this much stuff, I figured like a light wouldn't work or something, but hey, I'll take two wires being swapped. That seems pretty easy to fix. Okay, in theory, it should still work. Yep, sweet, sweet, nice. So that's uh, all wired. Now one quick little last thing I'm gonna install is this little uh, donut ring thing. This is gonna give me a place to just rest my uh, harness thing so it's not you know dangling and falling in the dirt. So this is just a piece of uh, pipe that I had in my scrap pile. It's a little too big, but I think it's gonna work out just fine. I just put a flat on it. This just gets bolted to the front here. 
A lot of people suggested I should make something to cover up the breakaway switch. I think I'll do that and I'll add that later. I'll just make a piece of a uh, angle that anchors on here and this kind of covers up this thing. I guess it's pretty common for those things to get uh, smashed. <laughs> and if I am uh, anything like anybody else, I'm really good at smashing things by accident. So that's gonna do it for this one. This trailer is all ready to roll. It actually goes around the block really, really nicely. It's, uh, it's definitely cool to have this thing that I made in my backyard rolling down the street. <laughs> so next time we're gonna wrap things up and we're gonna cover a little bit on uh, how I got this thing for this trailer. So as always, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the trailer build or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy Water King.